Welcome back to Media GTAO. Don't you wish I were on my microphone right now, my actual setup? Because I realized with the other one that I did of these, the fall of pedal wood, that when you're recorded on my phone, it just ends up being in the right ear. So I am in your right ear, gentlemen and ladies. So part of the reason that I'm posting is just a fucking post. Let me be honest. If honesty is the name of this channel, then let's play that game. But I don't like to just arbitrarily post shit. And what I want to talk about today is Demi Lovato and heroin. Now, I don't know anything of Miss Lovato's work. Is she a mouseketeer? She seems to be one of those Britney Spears, Christina Aguilera. You know, one of those young girls groomed by Disney since age 10 and probably raped by the likes of James Gunn, etc., no, I don't know. That's all uh, alleged and slander, etc. Okay, but Demi Lovato, I don't know anything about her except that she was an actress and supposed pop star. Now they just turn them out. I see that the system is still being run exactly the same. Of you know, let's try to make everyone a fucking pop star. Okay, so they start. All right, let's look at Miley Cyrus for example. Let's have this video just be about all these little Disney horse. Now, of course, I'm going to include boys in this group, Justin Timberlake and probably, uh, I don't know, Ricky Martin, whomever. But they start them out in some Nickelodeon TV show, some kind of canned offensive thing. And when I say offensive, I'm talking about laugh tracks. Now, I'm offended by things that are, like, um, artificial and otherworldly. If you watch Nickelodeon or something, I mean, you'll think your children are just on the, the fucking craziest drugs. You'll think your children are on meth with the kind of stuff that they watch. Your children are retarded. Look at this kind of stuff. I get that kids are stupid, okay? But it's like, hey, Drake, what, Josh? I was playing video games the other day, and I died. Oh, yeah, Josh? And then what happened? Well... I went to heaven. <laughs> okay. Um, that's crazy. And your children are sitting there and they're entertained by this. Now, I remember being a child. I do. I would watch the same VHS every day. Literally every day after school. I think it was Aladdin was one of them. I used to watch Wayne's World, um, The Fugitive. You know, a child <laughs> with Harrison Ford. A child has no taste a child is just, uh, I don't know, they they just don't get tired of things and everything's pretty simple to them, etc. But kids can be smart. Now, when you live in a Nickelodeon world, you're not giving them the opportunity to be, to be smart. Mita Jito, get to your point. Listen, every time I ramble, you fucking morons, I have in the back of my head where I'm going, okay? So don't you worry. We're talking about Nickelodeon and how these kids are on these really dumb shows, and you can only imagine, with everything going on in Pedogate, Pedo Wood, etc., what's been going on behind the scenes this entire time, and yet we never knew. Now listen, collectively, as a society, we are in some state of denial, like your mom, who doesn't want to know that you smoke pot. Okay, It is a don't ask, don't tell situation. So, we all, we all, probably knew that creepy shit was happening to these kids since they were very young. All right. Britney Spears in, I don't remember where she's from, Alabama, right? At a very early age, their stupid, slutty, ambitious mothers start pushing them into um, talent shows. We're talking five years old. We're talking Jean Benet Ramsey stuff here, okay? Sexualizing young girls. And yes, I'm talking about girls at the moment. Boys aren't... We don't have beauty pageants for boys, necessarily. At least not that I know of. So let's talk about young girls for a second. There's a whole contingent of them that I'm referring to. Okay, who? Media Gito. Uh, Britney Spears, Amanda Bynes, Miley Cyrus, Demi Lovato, Christina Aguilera. Sorry, car's coming. I'm out in the country, folks. This is how much I care about you. I'm out in the country... Recording videos about child rape. So, there's a whole gaggle of these young girls. Okay. Now, beauty pageants. Oh, you're such a stoner. Do these videos less high. All right. Listen, <laughs> I'm not even that high. And you're only using something against me that I told you in the first place. As Maynard James Keenan, who, by the way, is also being accused of rape, uh, once said, 
you know, the only thing you know about me is what I sold you, dumb fuck. Okay? Don't use the tiny bits of personal information that I give you against me. That's why I don't tell you anything about myself, you idiots. Because that's how you attack men. Now, I realize that most of you listening to this are already on my side. But who knows? You might have searched Demi Lovato and come up with my dumb ass. It's very possible. So these girls are groomed from a young age. Now, let's just take away the, the possibility that they're being sexually abused by any number of people among the ranks of beauty pageants, uh, Hollywood, etc. Now, getting back to my point, this is before a Britney Spears type is moved out to Alabama by her aforementioned stupid slutty mother, usually single mother at that point. Okay, so Britney Spears, we'll just use her for an example. I don't know the details of her upbringing. Okay, until hit me baby one more time. Okay, sorry if that was a spike <laughs> in volume. But, you know, this is her first single at whatever, 16 years old, 15, when Britney came out. Schoolgirl outfit hit me baby one more time. I mean, come on. Now I understand, ladies and gentlemen, that this was the naive year of 2000 in which anything went and Britney Spears could dress up like a sexy little schoolgirl talking about fucking beat the shit out of me. And it was like, oh, cool. This is, this is cool. This is a good song. All right. So let's just say Britney Spears was raised in this beauty pageant kind of circle. And so the point is they're being sexualized. All right. Makeup. And I have to be specific. Makeup, um, skimpy clothes, dancing, you know, just, just weird shit. Now, recently, this Tom Hanks video came out, which I think is SNL, and he's, um, he's in some beauty pageant thing with his daughter, and there's this whole sexy baby thing, and audience, the audience is just going crazy laughing. Oh, how precocious, how precocious of a, of a child, right? to be all adult-like and sexy and so funny. I just don't understand. I just don't understand why people laugh at things that aren't funny. It's why I haven't watched SNL ever, aside from a couple episodes. I was with some liberal friends uh, a couple months ago, and SNL was on. And my liberal friends were laughing uproariously, almost furiously, in defiance at some of these politically tinged sketches, and I can't recall what they're about. And it's the same effect as the your children watching Nickelodeon. They're just like, the, the audience is going crazy, everyone's going crazy, and you're sitting there going, what planet is this? This was not only not funny, it was filled with hatred at a certain group, probably the white man. <laughs> yes, I know how I sound, all right? In order to say things that are like interesting, you have to you have to sound like a lunatic sometimes. So that's fine. Again, if you're here, you already kind of agree with me. And if you don't, well, then that's just like your opinion, man. Getting back to beauty pageants and growing up. Okay. And you see how I start off these videos. I don't know what I'm going to say and then shit comes out and you listen to it. Well, good for all of us. Even that sentence right there is totally useless. All right. <laughs> Growing up sexualized in beauty pageants, and then eventually there is the possibility of television and film work. And the only way to make it in this business, baby, is to move out to Hollywood. That is the only way to make it. Am I still recording? Sweet. And so everyone knows this, right? There are certain other cities. No, Media G2, how do you know all this? Um, I do. Experience. And also, I want to point out about life. Most of it is logic. Okay? Most of what you think, if you're smart and you kind of like science, I'm not a science person. You could see a thing and know it's going to fall over. Gravity. All right? Ooh, you're so smart. I'm just saying most of life is a logic. All right? That's a whole another video. Just um, what, what's your point there? Well, I don't know. It's not that difficult. You just go around trying to not make things fall over. <laughs> All right. And by the way, I have no social responsibility to you. I do these videos to entertain myself and hopefully you. It's like, this isn't rocket surgery, folks. We can talk about serious things and also have a little bit of fun with them. All right. And also, I, I'm going to be um, not shutting down my channel. I'm not going to shut my channel down. But I'm entering a situation in about two weeks that I'm going to be so busy 
that making videos will not be possible anymore. Hence the on the fly, I'm, I'm on another vacation right now in the country, as I said. Making videos on my phone, it's kind of the best I can do right now. And I do thank you for tolerating the subpar audio quality. Now, these kids move out to Hollywood always, always, under the heavy influence of the parents, usually the mother. Okay, Mom was, just, just look at Britney Spears' mother, since I'm using Britney Spears as an example. Now, I don't know much about Britney's own mother, but it's pretty easy to extrapolate, okay? And even if this is incorrect, let me just tell you my thought process. Mom is head cheerleader in high school, right? Pretty, skinny. I mean, I don't think Britney Spears' mom, I've seen photos of her, I don't think she's pretty. And Britney back in the day, my God, Jesus Christ, gentlemen. When Britney first came out... <laughs> Oh, how dare you say Britney Spears was attractive. She was 15 at the time. You are a pedophile, Media G-Town. You are a creep. Well, listen, excuse me, but these old men, all right, started dressing her up in a Catholic schoolgirl outfit, tied at the belly button, while she's prancing around with the gang of dancers talking about hit me one more time and oh, baby, baby. I mean, come on. It's not my fault, all right? There's only so much I can do. I'm merely a man. I'm being facetious because the point is, like, you really cannot look at the public and go, how dare you sexualize this young girl when it wasn't... When it was the mainstream media, for example, MTV. Yeah, that's where Britney really got her start. Perhaps VH1. That propagated this entire thing. They made it happen. Okay? And to start blaming the, um consumer victim, which in this case would be me, for finding Britney Spears to be sexually attractive, when she was 15 years old and I might have been 75 years old at the time, oh, well, I'm just such a creep, right? Now, getting back to Britney's mother, and it'll all tie back to Demi Lovato, I promise you, but that is why you listen to this channel, because it's like a long-winded, one-way conversation that fucking pisses you off and makes you want to unsubscribe. But gosh darn it, you just don't know anyone like Media g -Tow. Britney Spears' mother, let's say, you know, she's pretty. She grew up in the South. Head cheerleader, just, you know, got what she wanted. Had a good life. Has kids. Um, and decides, oh, I have a little girl and she's cute. And I never, my point is, these parents live this vicarious stuff because they never got to do it. All right. So Brittany's mom might have regretted getting knocked up or at whatever age, 22, and having little Brittany and her sister, Jamie Lynn Spears. All right. And of course, tangentially, you have the Simpson clan, Jessica Simpson, Ashley Simpson, uh, Jessica's incredibly creepy father, Joe, always making comments about her tits, right? And yes, I am I am walking on a long country road right now, gentlemen, and I'm still looking over my fucking shoulder to see who's listening to me. <laughs> that is how hard it is to go your own way. Really, it's, you know, you cannot be heard. Because what you're saying sometimes is so controversial. And that's why it connects with you so much. Because you know it's true. You know that most of the things I say are true. So, a lot of these parents are just living out their vicarious dreams through their children, their daughters. And to do so, they make a bargain. It is denial. It's like we were talking about. Okay? They will leave their young daughters and sons, and I'll get to the boys in a moment, in locked offices with old men, just thinking everything's going to be fine. It's not even denial. You know, they wouldn't, they wouldn't imagine. Let's be specific. What are you talking about? All this, you know, the problem with the whole child rape thing, etc., is that it's this unspoken thing, and we need to say what's exactly happening. So let's say a young Britney Spears is in a closed office with a locked door with a 60-year-old man who wants to make it happen for it. Now, most times, I will, I will concede that most of these times, the parents will be in the room. Are they in the room with the client, the daughter, the talent, every time? No, of course not. And the powerful man, yes, I said it, because not everything, not everything that Me Too says, gentlemen, has been incorrect. It's powerful men. Yes, it is. 
that mean men are inherently bad? No, but of course, there's been powerful men sexually coercing women because they can and because sex has lost its meaning. But that's an entirely different video. So, of course, there was some point where a young Britney Spears, continuing her as our example, is left alone in a room with a man, all right? Something's going to happen at a certain point. There's a reason that Britney shaves her head at 28 years old publicly and goes fucking nuts, all right? It's not just the media exposure and the fame. There's a whole lot of demons that these kids just don't want to deal with. Quiet. So, anyway, I'm, I guess I'm losing my steam here, guys, but I'm not going to edit the video. It's too difficult, and I'm having too much fun with you. Now, all of this sets the stage. So the kid gets to Hollywood, has been sexually abused, and gets a part. Do you understand? They, they, they get the part because the agent or whomever feels guilty about it. All right? They feel they have to give them the part. They got their rocks off, and it's a secret. They know it's an exchange. It is blackmail. The child gets the part so that she can't say anything about the old man making her fillet him in a locked office. You wanted to talk specifics, Media G-Town? Well, there it is. Okay? No, I'm not getting a fucking sexual thrill off talking about this. Although, if we're really honest... A lot of you guys are talking about this and just enjoying the conversation. And if I'm, if I'm really honest, too, the material is controversial, which makes it a good conversation to have. Okay? Yes, even in terrible things. Yes, that's what this channel's for, so I don't fucking lie to you. Even in terrible things, there's an element of entertainment. You may not like me saying that, but you know it's true. I mean, why do you think I get these women watching my female murderer videos all day long? Oh, are they really educating themselves? No, they get off on it. Especially Jody Arias. I mean, dirty talk with Travis and then murdering him. It's sexy. It's salacious. It's a Hollywood. All right. You have these Mouseketeer girls, you know, so it's an exchange. It is blackmail. All right. They get the part to keep their fucking mouth shut. Right. So, Demi Lovato. Do I need to pause? Have I really lost my train of thought that bad? Media Gita, why do you disrespect us so much by posting thoughts that are half-baked? Well, it's called stream of consciousness, man. Just think of the thing as a live stream. You can hear airplanes in the background. All right. It's a beautiful thing. Now, l let me just, you know, all of that sets the stage for something... For something like Demi Lovato, someone like Demi Lovato, where she may find herself, it's not, it's not crazy to assume she went through a similar went through. See, that's the thing, man. You can, you can be really fair like I am about sexual abuse in Hollywood. But these kids went out there. They wanted to. Yes, they did. I mean, I, of course we know about stage parents, which is what I've been talking about a lot. Britney Spears' mother being the example in this video. Stage parents pushing their kids into acting, etc. The, the truth is that most of these kids really enjoy acting and singing. They get started in the theater. You know, you could start in uh, grade school. You're in a play. And it really comes to, like, narcissism. They love everyone looking at them. Children especially. I was privy to watching a talent show recently in which children were fucking hula hooping and singing badly. And they're not... <laughs> They're terrible. Most of them were terrible. There were a couple that were perhaps actually talented. Some violinist girl. But my point being that these kids get endless praise um, since since birth just for doing anything. Right? Now, the one thing that I was happy about in regards to the talent show is that they did have a winner. Now, I thought they were going to give all the children participation trophies. I think everyone did get something for, for playing. But they did elect a winner of the talent show. In a fucking pussified world, this is something to be proud of. Alright? We still have winners. 
uh, I participated in the adult portion of the talent show and I did not win. I cried myself to sleep. So the kids want to go out to Hollywood in the first place. They do. It's exciting. All right. They love the attention and there's the promise of fame. Someday, I mean, someday you're going to make it. Go out there. Maybe I can be famous. That's the dream of many. Okay? That's what the entire town of Hollywood is built on. What they don't tell you or what people willfully ignore is that there will be an exchange for said things, for fame. Not just one exchange, but many. That exchange is your body, your sexual acts for parts in TV, in movies, in music, and your, and your silence. Your silence. When you get these things... You will be silent, or I will tell everybody. When I give you this part, what's Emily Votto been in? She's mostly a singer, right? It shows how much I know. I mean, I am tuned in. It's not because I'm so cool, you guys. I do know who Justin Bieber is and whatever. I'm not I'm not snobby about artists. I just don't happen. Demi Lovato is one that I don't happen to know much about. Anyway, she is a singer. I know that. I will give you, I will make you a pop star. I'll make you a pop star. Well, who am I? Oh, gee. Who am I? Clive Davis, perhaps? I don't know. Def Jam? I will make you a pop star. Now, you're going to do this. And if you tell anybody, I'll, uh, I'll tell everyone, you know, what you, I don't know. I don't know how the producer, to be honest with you, I don't know how the producers maintain the talent's complicity in silence, probably a non-disclosure agreement. Okay. So dimly about her, I haven't even spoken about heroin yet. I don't know anything about her drug use. But there is a reason that these stars get involved with these ever-increasing drugs. A lot of it is just a way to cope, okay? These, a lot of these people, despite it being self-inflicted, have more to cope with than you and I. Pedal wood, pedal gate. It's, it's traumatized many of children who have grown into adults. And as we know, the cycle of child abuse is just one of these things that perpetuates and continues. Okay. And, and I'll be really honest, I frankly don't understand quite how it works. Because you would think... Is this still recording? Good. You would think that a child who is sexually... Now, even the words child sexual abuse, these are these are just words. They're signifiers. That's why I'm being so sub- specific. <laughs> okay. So let, let's take... Let's take a boy who grows up in the Catholic Church. Priest may want to see him, and then he'll put his hand on the boy's thigh... And then start touching him and say, does this feel good? And the boy would say, no. And the priest would just hold him there, touch his penis. And then maybe the priest would actually flate the young boy. Oh, media gita, this is so inappropriate. No, it's not inappropriate. I am actually telling you what happens. The problem is we, we talk about sexual child abuse. Um, just like that, we say those three words. If you really want to know what it is, what I just said, people don't want to talk about it because it's so unpleasant. I understand that. Um, but we need to define what it is to make it more real. Okay. So an example of what it would be is a Catholic priest uh, confusing a young boy and then filleting a young boy without, obviously, without a young boy's consent because that concept doesn't even exist. Children are not sexual. As I pointed out on my Fall of Pedo Wood video. Okay. So, yeah, I don't, I don't have an end to this. I, you know, as I said, I do these videos to get some things out. Um, now, I guess, here's the, here's the original point of the video. Okay, I, I'm getting my... I, I, obviously, I went off. That's, I don't apologize for that anymore. And that's actually a large point of this channel, is to be able to do the stream of consciousness have the tangents, and then bring it all back, hopefully. Sometimes I don't bring it back. What I wanted to do this video about, actually, is how everyone is freaking out about Demi Lovato 
overdosing on heroin. Okay. Uh, oh, she needs help. Have some sympathy, blah, blah, blah. Well, as this is largely a MGTOW channel that I do here on Southwest Studios and Media G-Town, you know, we only give a fuck when it's a chick. We only give a fuck when it's a woman. Okay. Um, yeah, and I say, okay, as a, it helps me. I, I can see how it's annoying. I know how I sound like Mr. Mackey from South Park, okay? Uh, but to do otherwise at this point would make me self-conscious and lose my train of thought, okay? We only give a fuck about... We, we only care. Please, media jeets out. That's another thing I need to work on is being less crude. There's a time for profanity. It's almost a science, but if you use too much of it, you will... Not isolate. You will... Gosh, I can't think of the word. Oh, alienate. You will alienate your listener if you use too much profanity. People only care, the public only cares when it's a woman. Okay, so a high-profile Disney pop star Demi Lovato. And of course, now was she in that movie Spring Breakers? That's how I might know her. And part of the gimmick of that was like, hey, let's get these four teenage TV music stars, etc. Selena Gomez, Ashley Benson, well, Harmony Korine's wife. Anyway, and then maybe Demi Lovato. I don't know. Who was the other one? Might have been Demi. Part of the whole thing in that movie was like, hey, these teen stars aren't innocent. They're actually hot. But they never got naked, so I was like, come on, bro. Oh, but I'm such a pervert for thinking that, right? I'm such a pervert for having these uh, four skinny, sexy-ass white chicks in my face for two hours, and then even considering having sex with them, though. that that that's I'm a pervert. I'm I belong in jail for that. Now, I know pointing things like that out are obvious, but you have to, you know, because they want to demonize me for, you know, it's that's what feminism is all about. It's like a, a low cut shirt that says, don't look at my tits. So, yeah, I mean, they only care. They only care about heroin addiction when it's like some innocent girl. But why I wanted to do this video is because right now there's a dude dying from a heroin overdose. In 10 minutes, there'll be another dude dying from a heroin overdose. Obviously, they don't matter because they're not famous. But we have the famous people, the famous men dying of heroin overdoses all the time. Philip Seymour Hoffman. At all. It's not always heroin, but it's usually some derivative. Some kind of opiate. You know, fentanyl with Prince. Uh, all the prescription medications that killed Tom Petty. Okay, I believe he might have been into fentanyl as well. We can go back 10 years to Heath Ledger, etc. Okay, A lot of men. But the public only cares and views it as a crisis when it starts to happen to high-profile women. As I said, I don't know anything about Demi Lovato. I'm not saying that to brag as a hipster. And in fact, I wish I knew more about her because I like to be informed. If this was Britney Spears who had overdosed on heroin, I'd be able to tell you more. Okay, And I obviously talked about Britney a lot this video, just as an example. Right. So, yeah, I don't know. I mean, there's really no... I, I guess the video ended up being about how these kids even get to Hollywood in the first place. Okay, And it's not that Harvey Weinstein flies out to Illinois. He doesn't fly out to Peoria. See a 10-year-old on the street. And say, you, I want you. Now, I'm laughing about that because as I said it, apparently, that is how Tom Hanks met Su Sarah Ruth Ashgate or something. I forget her last name. Ashcroft. The story here, and with this, all this Isaac Cappy stuff, he's the name, so he's the guy I've been watching, right? Isaac Cappy is supposedly exposing many Hollywood pedophiles. Okay. And he'll just come out with a new name every day, Steven Spielberg or whatever, and not really give you much evidence, etc. But Cappy seems trustworthy. This is a this is a very strange thing. Take Isaac Cappy with a grain of salt. Okay. I believe him. A lot of what he says about Seth Green, you know, Seth's wife, etc. Um, but this is the beginning of something. You can either get on board or it's gonna slap you in the face. It's you know, it's it's the me too of <laughs> Of child rape, essentially. Um, all right. Well, I'm losing steam. This has been Media Gita. Have a nice day.